Today I'm going to be looking at a Micros POS system. These are a bit different than the type of computers I normally work with, which are typically like servers and desktops. And this is a bit different than the other POS system I looked at a couple months ago, as it seems to be a bit older, has a few odd different ports that are just differently laid out. Taking a look at the unit, there's a fairly heavy duty feeling touchscreen in the front with probably a thick piece of plastic so that it can't easily be damaged. It also looks like it has a resistive touchscreen, which generally work a lot better with things like gloves or pointing at with non-fingery items. There's a power button on the bottom right on the unit. Flipping it over, the ports are at the top of the unit, it looks like, and on the back is just a few ventilation holes and some rubber feet. Getting an OS running on this unit was fairly difficult. The first thing I tried doing was just booting from my network boot server using WDS and a copy of Windows 7 32-bit. I got an error saying that it wasn't compatible and that it couldn't find the network on it, which is likely due to me not having the network driver for this device in my image. Now one way to get around it is just install it from a USB installer, which I tried doing, but unfortunately it didn't seem to like it. I did some hunting around in the BIOS, which turned out to be pretty much a bog standard computer BIOS. Well, with a few other things. First of all, all of these POS systems seem to have a lot more options for things like COM ports and IR key requests than any other consumer board I've worked with, likely due to them being more important and commonly used in its intended application. The other option it had was booting from a CF card. This system had a little industrial 256 megabyte CF card included from it that it originally used as a boot drive. The last boot option that I saw was being used as a USB drive. This exact model was actually intended to boot from a USB drive. And when I tried booting from a USB drive, I actually got some weird old version of I think Fedora 9 on it, which worked, but was seemed to be in a state of just waiting for a server which I don't have access to. So I couldn't see any info about it or log into the OS at all. I decided not to dive deeper into that OS and just put my own on it. But before I put an OS on it, I wanted to take a look inside the unit. Taking a look at the unit, I noticed there was a couple of screws on the bottom. There was four of them under the feet, but those only held the little rubber feet on. And then there was two at the bottom. Taking the two at the bottom off allowed me to pull the bezel around the top screen off. And then looking around, there was one more screw which led me to rotate the screen out of the way. The screen then was had three cables plugged into it. One of which was the touchscreen controller with what looks like just five cables going to the X and Y of the touchscreen. And the actual touchscreen controller was on the board itself. There was another cable for power, and then another cable that did the data for the display. It definitely looks like it had a CCFL display from the large inverter on the back of it. It also is a surprisingly large and rugged display, weighing more than some of the laptops I have. Taking a look at the inside of the unit, there was a metal cage that looks like it was partially heatsink and partially EMI shielding. On the left side of that was the power supply. It was a 12 volt, 100 watt power supply that converts the line power into 12 volts for the motherboard to use. It doesn't use standard ATX power though. On the right side of the case is the main board. It contained all the IO at the back and a few other common connectors like the memory slots in the bottom right, which use standard DDR2 RAM. This one happened to have one stick of 512 megabytes of memory in it. It also had what looked like some pads near the bottom left that contained um, the chips. I will take the board out in a little bit to see exactly what's hiding there. And then also had some interesting connectors in the middle. One of which looks like a SATA connector and one looks like a PCIe 1X card. Um, I'm not fully sure those are because I've seen those connectors used for other uses, but I'm going to try that in a little bit to see if those actually work. Other than that, it's a fairly bog standard computer motherboard. So it has all the standard power delivery, the main kind of sensor monitoring chip and low speed IO. The board was held in with eight screws. Taking a look at the bottom of the board, there was the chipset and the CPU. This generation of Intel Atoms had a separate North bridge that did things like the memory controller and then the CPU did only the CPU computations. The CPU had a little bit of copper to help get the heat away from it, and Northbridge was just going straight into the chassis of the system. One more thing I did when I had a peek inside the system was put a bigger memory stick in. I took out the 512 meg stick and put in a 2 gig stick I had laying around, because having extra memory just makes things easier. And now I'm going to go back to trying to install Windows on it. I took a spare hard drive I had laying around and plugged it in using an external power supply to the SATA connector just to find out what would happen. 
Luckily, it showed my hard drive in the boot menu, so it was working. I then tried installing Windows on it, and it would boot into the installer, but continued to throw weird errors on it. And I tried a good amount of different things to get Windows working on this system, but unfortunately I could just never get Windows 7 or 10 to boot on this. At this time, I decided to give Linux a shot. I tried booting from a bootable Linux ISO, and it seemed to work fine. So I then started putting Debian on to try playing around, and I kind of was thinking of ideas of what I could use like a little all-in-one that's fairly slow for. And one thing that I kind of came up with was a little Grafana monitoring system. I use Grafana to keep track of a lot of little servers and stuff I have at home, and it makes it into a pretty web page that should be able to load on any system. In order to get this working, I kind of came to the conclusion that I couldn't use the 256 meg CF card, as there's no way I could fit a modern browser in Linux OS on that. So I found a spare 16 gig USB stick. Unfortunately, this USB stick was slow. Like, it would respond, but Debian I think took about 5 to 10 minutes to boot up, and was almost unusable. But I could get Grafana loaded, and it would kind of work. It took probably about 30 minutes dealing with such a slow UI, but I could get it to load Grafana, and it was a cool little pretty image. I'm now going to leave it just sitting on kind of a spare spot in my room just to monitor it, so then I can easily glance over and see how systems are going in the utilization. The other nice thing for this use case is it's a fairly low power system, so it uses only about 20 to 30 watts maximum with the screen running, of which most of that power actually is the screen. The system itself uses less than 10 watts running. Thanks for watching this video and subscribe for more little computer and server videos in the future.